with a land area of 2.14 million square kilometers, roughly the same as Western Europe, Saudi Arabia ranks as the world's 14th largest country in September 1930. Two, Ibn Saud, then ruling under the name King Abdul Aziz of Saudi Arabia, proclaimed the country to be a kingdom. Due to its low average annual rainfall of less than 150 millimeters, Saudi Arabia is among the few nations on the planet without a single permanent river. However, something out of the ordinary is happening in the deserts of the kingdom. In the early 1960s, Saudi Arabia had only 400 square kilometers of the productive ground. Today, the kingdom has a vast agricultural network of peculiar-looking fields that allows farmers to grow a wide range of crops and fruits. Amazing though it may seem, the metamorphosis of this desert into a lush forest is a sight to behold. If so, then how did Saudi Arabia accomplish this feat? In this video, we will talk about what Saudi Arabia shocked everyone with. Before starting, go and subscribe to this channel for more amazing videos. The expanding of the arable land. At the outset of the 1960s, Saudi Arabia possessed only about 400 square kilometers of fertile land. Saudi Arabia is now home to an arable land area that is 35,000 square kilometers in size, making it bigger than the Netherlands and three times that of Cork. It's unclear how they doubled the amount of farmland in such a short time. An incredible amount of development has been made in agriculture in Saudi Arabia over the past three decades especially considering the kingdom only receives four inches of rain annually on average, among the lowest rates on the planet. Oil reserves in Saudi Arabia are the world's largest. The dam oil field in Saudi Arabia was found in March of 1930, eight at a depth of 1440 meters. About 17 of the world's largest proven petroleum reserves are now located in the country. One liter of potable water in Saudi Arabia costs more than one liter of oil. Gawar oil field is the greatest oil resource in the world, with an estimated 75 billion barrels of oil left. To put that in perspective, the oil field's reserves are enough to fill 4,770,897 Olympic swimming pool. Simply, Saudi Arabia has a serious water shortage. Saudi Arabia, self-sufficient in consumables, wheat, dates, milk products, eggs, fish, Poultry, fruits, vegetables, and flowers are only some of the present exports from Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Once widely consumed in Saudi Arabia, dates are now primarily grown for an international charity. What caused this to occur? Except for a narrow strip of coastal territory in the southwest, most agricultural activity on the Arabian Peninsula was limited to the cultivation of dates and small-scale vegetable production in an oasis. A majority of the locals relied on their little plots of land for their food, and they sold any excess to the caravans that passed by. Since the 1970s, when the government began implementing initiatives to encourage the use of modern farming methods and rural infrastructural elements, the kingdom's agricultural output has expanded considerably across the board. Large quantities of beef, milk, and eggs have allowed Saudi Arabia to become food self-sufficient. Moreover, since Saudi Arabia is now a major exporter of wheat, dates, and dairy products into other things like eggs, fish, and chicken, the country's reliance on food imports has decreased. In the early stages of the initiative, intensive dairy, meat, poultry, and egg production all were established, and by 1985, local farms were already satisfying domestic demand for a variety of previously imported commodities. Currently, Saudi Arabia is home to a number of the largest and most technologically advanced dairy farms in all the Middle East. With an annual milk yield of 1,800 gallons per cow, this is among the highest rates in the world. Aquaculture, the emerging sector in Saudi Arabia. Private companies with government encouragement are increasingly investing in the growing aquaculture industry. More and more marine and terrestrial fish farms have been established. The majority of them may be found along the Saudi coastline of the Red Sea. It has been highly effective in terms of shrimp farming. Bio Rubian, Saudi Arabia's national shrimp enterprise, sells the vast majority of its product to the United States and Japan from this shrimp farm. South of Jeddah, which is managed by Saudi hydrologists as marine engineered. The rapid transformation of the kingdom from such a wheat importer to a wheat exporter, for instance, is often regarded as one of its greatest agricultural achievements. After constructing its first grain silos in 1978, 
the country was able to meet its own wheat needs independently by 1984. As a result, average yields in the key producing districts reached 3.6 tons per acre, and Saudi Arabia began exporting wheat to 30 countries, including China and the former Soviet Union. While Saudi farmers still produce a lot of other grains like barley and sorghum, they've had to substantially reduce their wheat production in recent years to protect the country's scarce water supplies. Fruit and vegetable production in Saudi Arabia has increased thanks to advances in agriculture and transportation. Watermelons, grapes, citrus fruits, or tomatoes are among the most abundant agricultural items sent from Saudi Arabia to neighboring countries. The al hikma Research Facility in Jizan, Saudi Arabia's well-watered southwest, cultivates tropical fruits such as pineapples, pawpaws, bananas, mangoes, and guavas. The Donations by Saudi Arabia This agricultural revolution has made possible a richness and diversity of native cuisines that would have been unimaginable just a few generations ago. While dates remain a valuable complement, they are no longer considered a staple food in Saudi Arabia. About 500,000 metric tons of dates, representing 450 different types, are produced annually for humanitarian aid. One of the several facilities in Al Hasa, whose primary purpose is the manufacturing of dates for export, is funded by international charity, donating thousands of tons of dates annually to help combat hunger and food shortages. Notably, through the World Food Program of the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, Saudi Arabia is the second largest contributor to a world food program, and many countries have benefited directly from the country's food aid. The recent expansion of Saudi Arabia's agricultural sector can be directly attributed to a number of government programs, such as the supply of interest, free loans and support, and technical services. The agricultural sector has benefited from low-cost water, fuel, and power, as well as duty, free importation of raw materials and machinery. The investment legislation in force since April 2000 provides additional advantages, such as a tax holiday for international joint venture partners of Saudi individuals or companies of up to 10 years. The major institution in change of putting agricultural policy, the Ministry of Agriculture is indeed the primary agency responsible for implementing the agricultural policy by way of research and extension services provided to farmers. Saudi Arabia's Agricultural Development Bank, SAB is another helpful organization that offers loan subsidies and zero-interest loans to farmers. In 1972, farmers across the country came together to create an association that would buy and store wheat, construct flour mills, and manufacture animal feed. Saudi Arabia has spent a lot of money updating the roadways that bring its farmland to its farmland to its urban center. Under the development plans, the government still helps new farmers invest in capital, intensive projects with the goals of diversification and efficiency. The government invests in and supports research initiatives that aim to increase agricultural output by enhancing food crop yields and creating pest, resistant plant varieties. These projects are a joint effort between local farmers as scientists working at agricultural research centers at Saudi Arabian colleges and institutions. This was all about today's video. What do you think they did to reach till here? Let us know in the comments section.